Let's start with a small exercise, so to warm you up. I will have three questions to you. First of all, how many of you have used recently artificial intelligence? Okay. How many of you have used some kind of medicines less, uh, recently? Some of you. And how many of you know that AI can be used to find new drugs? Okay, great, fantastic. So, my name is Kamila Skazabel, and today I will uncover like a hidden layers for you, a world of medicines and how artificial intelligence can be used to find new drugs. But let's start with your imagination first. Close your eyes for a moment and think of, imagine the world without diseases. No diseases at all. Wouldn't that be beautiful and fantastic? Now open your eyes and see that unfortunately we are not there yet. But with the new methodologies and new approaches, we can get there. And I would love to tell more about artificial intelligence as a tool that can bring us there. But what do you think when you hear artificial intelligence? Misinformation, deep fakes, Job loss, there are people being afraid of lo losing their jobs. And now think of an AI as a tool. A tool that not only will create deep fakes, will not only manipulate with pictures, with images, but can be used for medicine, for life sciences, can be used to, for example, analyze medical images, like in diagnostics on in therapeutics. Do you know how the process of drug, drug development looks like? I guess not many of you know, knows that, but you have to believe me, it's super long and super costly. It's like billion of dollars. And it takes like 10 to 15 years to get one drug enter the market. You can see that uh, even though we are there for decades and the budgets that, be, uh, that, that were used to find new drugs have, has risen like, have risen like unimaginably. We are still not able um, to find drugs quickly. So now, looking at that and thinking of scientists that um, can use artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, name it, large language models like ChatGPT, can find new drugs faster and with are uh, really, really much cheaper. That's really, really appealing, don't you think? And now starting from the very first step of drug, drug discovery, um, we'll think of an um, experiment. So let's think that we already have a target. It's, let's call it a protein that is uh, not functioning properly in your body. And now we need to find a small molecule that will make something about it, that will cure that. So in the regular drug discovery process, there will be a scientist sitting in the lab for like 10 years, looking all over, like, you know, doing different experiments. Oh, maybe that will work, maybe that will work. And then through lab discovery, we'll go to lab validation. And now I would love to uh, bring closer to you a replacement for lab discovery. That is um, AI drug discovery. So we already know the protein. And now imagine you have a box. And that box has a shape in it. 
and you need to find a needle in the haystack that will match the shape in the box. But instead of one haystack, you have multitude of haystacks, 10 to 9 needles in the whole world, and the chemical space is the globe. So the haystacks are being scattered all over the globe. And now you need to think about that pure scientist. It's like, okay, I need to travel there, 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 there. look for that different haystacks, look for the protein. 50 days later, totally devastated scientist, no needle. And now you can use machine learning and deep learning algorithm to do, is, it is called a virtual screening, to actually find that one haystack, actually, that has those needles that may fit into your box. That is your drug candidate. And now, with that 50 to 100 drug, drug candidates, you can go to the lab validation. Not with thousands of them. Not like with millions of haystacks there. 10 to 50. Uh, 50 to 100, sorry. Okay, and after we have that drug candidate, it should go through preclinical studies like toxicity, um, like efficacy, and then it should go into clinical studies. And now, clinical studies are super regulated. FDA, a mass of Food and Drug Administration in the United States, a mass in Europe, looks at your hands like every day. It's not easy to get a drug out there on the market. So you need to plan, you need to organize your clinical study in a way that it gives you the highest chance of success. And now you have a population, a population of people for whom the drug may or may not work. And you need to, well, in the ideal world, with the precision medicine having in mind, we'll start from the person and get to a personalized drug for the person. But as you were imagining a few moments ago, we are not in the ideal world. So we need now, having that drug candidate, reach the right people there. And that is also where artificial intelligence can help you. So you can gather all the information from, from that group of patients, it's called cohort, like genetic information, any kind of omics information there is, immunomics, transcriptomics, metabolomics, any kind of omics inter information there is. You can gather images, scans, uh, like uh, x-rays, Physical, inf physical information, any kind of information that you can collect out of a single person and then translate it into a vector that will go into the machine learning algorithm and then will group your patients in a groups that may or may not use the drug. And that is called patient stratification. So fantastic. We are already in clinical studies. And have you remember, uh, do you remember the, the slide earlier? Only 10% of drugs go through the clinical studies. So 90% fail. So you want to have a clinical study that has the highest rate of success. And now the fun part begins. So FDA approvals, regulatory. All over the whole part of drug discovery, Everything is regulated. You need to, first of all, prepare the whole uh, clinical study, get the approval for the clinical study, monitor in real time that clinical study, and that's only the first part where algorithms are telling you what has happened already. But with machine learning, deep learning, AI methods, you can predict what will happen in the future. So. For example, you can get with there with the risk management, so uh, predict the risk factors. You can change the protocols uh, regarding the results of your methods. And mm -hmm. even with that, 
you can then fill in the FDA submission. And that's not it. It's not yet over with the AI. So in general, after the approval of the drug at the, the very end, you can also use VLMs, so virtual language modeling, uh, large language models, to propose the information to the patients. So how to actually get to the patients, get to the, the most important part in the chain in a way that it is understandable for them. So summarizing, where AI can help you? We started with having the target. So we had that box. But even there, AI can help you find the right target, analyze the data in a way that will show what actually is connected with the given indication. Then you can get the lead candidate for your target. Not only small molecules, as we were talking, but also like biologic therapeutics. Then, after that, something that I've also skipped, but toxicology, super important, on and off toxicity of um, our molecule, efficacy, stability, pharmacokinetics, everything can be predicted, although then it needs to get, be te to, 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 to get tested in, uh, in vitro and in uh, animals. After that, you are going to clinical studies that we've already agreed that AI also can help. And fill in your regulatory submissions and get to your patients. And now, as we are talking today about the hidden layers. So many of you are now in front of the very important decision in your lives. So choosing the career, the path. We've heard today about STEM. So now you all have the power to shape the health, the future of the health system with artificial intelligence.